All right, so uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this talk today. So yeah, I am Ramel, and uh, I'm a malware researcher, and I'm based here in Singapore. So our, uh, my talk today is entitled uh, Internet, of, Internet of Things, uh, Battle of the Bots. So to give you an idea, uh, this talk is based on our research for the past year. And uh, since we, we were monitoring uh, Mirai botnet and all related samples to it. So uh, let's take a look. So here's an overview of what we'll be discussing today. So uh, first is a brief introduction of Mirai. Second is uh, anti-analysis and encryption of its configuration if there are any changes. The next one is the, our lab setup and honeypot. So how did we get all the samples that will be presented today? And lastly is the Mirai variants. So we will compare them from the original source code of Mirai then the changes of the variants. Then lastly is the popular variants. So the overview. So uh, just to refresh your memory on Mirai, so we'll just take a look on some uh, news that it made uh, two years ago. So the first one is uh, the first attack, the attack on Krebs on security. So uh, this guy is a famous journalist in computer security. And the attack caused the site to be offline for four days. And the record uh, traffic was around uh, 620 gigabyte per second. And uh, next attack is uh, against DIN its infrastructure. So it made uh, popular websites like Twitter, Spotify, and Reddit unavailable to users. So uh, we can see already like uh, the immediate impact of Mirai uh, two years ago. So uh, not only that, so uh, another study uh, showed that uh, DDoS is also bad for businesses that are being targeted. So roughly 8% uh, of Dean's customers base uh, stopped using their services after they were, after they were attacked. So this was also a huge loss uh, uh, to Dean. The next, uh, we'll talk about the first appearance of Mirai. So uh, it was coded by Ana Senpai, or his AKA. And the source code uh, was released in Hack Forums on September 20, 2016. So this is the actual post by Ana Senpai. And he also released the source code in this post. So the good news is, uh, since uh, certain information from his posting, this posting, uh, led to identifying the authors. So uh, fast forward, after all the investigations, uh, the author behind this Mirai botnet uh, was uh, pleaded guilty last December 2017. So uh, when there's a good news, there's also some bad news. Uh, since this is now open source, the source code of Mirai, so uh, anyone can use it, including you or me, or like any cyber criminal can just reuse the code, and they can create their own botnet. So, uh, and this cause, uh, and maybe uh, when they create their, their own botnet, botnet, they can also uh, have the same impact as Mirai on what they did like to Dean and uh, Krebs. So now this is the problem that we have, and many called, uh, many variants, or we can, we can say uh, copycats of Mirai, uh, have been modifying the source code uh, to infect more and more uh, IoT devices. So we will take a more uh, detailed look on Mirai variants uh, later on. So uh, if uh, any of you maybe have uh, looked at the source code of Mirai, so these are the main components included uh, in the source code. So we have the command and control server, we have the report server, we have the loader, and we have the bot. So this bot here, uh, this is the one that is uh, installed in the infected device. So this is the payload. So this bot has uh, three functions. First is the attack, so this is uh, this includes the DDoS attacks. Uh, next is the killer. Uh, this is the one uh, functions to uh, uh, stop the processes, like maybe other botnets are running there, so it can uh, kill those processes. Then scanner. So this is to infect more IoT devices. So it acts like a, it acts like a worm. So uh, to have a better understanding on how uh, the infection chain works by Mirai, so we have here. We start here, so the infected IoT device. So the bot module is installed here. And then what it does is, uh, does a telnet port scan. 
So it uses the default credentials, so it already has a list of default credentials. Then after uh, successfully uh, uh, successfully logging in to that IoT device, uh, it will report the IP and the credentials to the report server. So this is was uh, the other component that we mentioned. Then having the IP and credentials already, so we have here the loader. So this loader will be the one who will uh, install the bot in the infected device. So now we'll have an, another infected device. So once this uh, device is infected, it will just repeat the same process. So uh, it will scan again some random IPs. Then if it's infected, if it's vulnerable, then it will infect this. And another thing, uh, once it's infected, uh, it will report now to the CNC server, like telling them that, telling the CNC that uh, this device is infected and it can already receive commands, like whichever the CNC wants. Then next is we have here the botnet, botnet admin. So uh, the botnet, botnet admin uh, can sell or rent out the use of the botnets here. So he can rent it out or sell to a botnet user or let's say a fraudster here. So once the fraudster gets access to the botnet, uh, he can send commands to the CNC server. Then the CNC server will send the uh, attack commands to the infected devices. Then these infected devices will uh, do a DDoS uh, to its target. So basically, uh, this is the uh, infection chain uh, of Mirai. And uh, just to uh, summary, so this is are the attacks available uh, uh, to Mirai. So this is all in the source code. Then next is we have the anti-analysis and the encryption of the configuration table of Mirai. As so this is the binary uh, hex view of one of the Mirai samples that we encountered, so ELF, the header. Uh, so most samples uh, is not encrypted by any custom packers like when we compare it to Windows. So usually it, it is just packed by UPX. So uh, basically if it's just packed by UPX, it should be easily be de decompressed. But uh, what the uh, Mirai variants or authors do, is they change this one. So this should be, uh, the proper header should be UPX uh, exclamation point. But this one is uh, changed by SNDJ. So what happens is uh, if we use the UPX uh, tool to decompress this file, uh, it will fail. So if we do automation, then uh, it cannot decrypt, it cannot decompress the sample properly. So uh, what we do, we just uh, change this value here to its proper header, which is UPX, and we, we, we are able to decompress it uh, easily. And then uh, next one is, uh, so not only SNDJ, we found that uh, numerous values were changed in those uh, UPX headers. So we have around uh, 18 different headers be, uh, that been, has been modified. So uh, these are the list. And if you have an, uh, to give you an idea on the configuration table that we are talking about. So this again is based on our source code. So we have here is the CNC domain. We have the CNC port, the table scan domain, and the scan CB port. So for these values, the in hex, these are the encrypted ones. So to decrypt this, I, when this is decrypted, you will get this value. So CNC change me. So uh, for those uh, variants, they just change this one uh, to change their own C CNC. And goes the same with the others. So uh, how does the decryption of Mirai work? So let's take a look here about uh, to decrypt. So uh, basically, it has a table key here. So here, I just co copied here to see here. So this is a dead beef. So what it does, it's uh, just uh, use uh, XOR algorithm, so it's quite simple. So it XOR each byte of this table key. So if we XOR each byte to each other, we'll get a value of uh, 0x22. And uh, this value here, when we XOR it to the encrypted configuration table, we should be able to uh, dump the configuration table. So an example here is the CNC port, so I showed it uh, in the previous slide. 
So we have 22 and 35. So XORing 22 to 22 is uh, 0. Then XOR 22 to 35 is uh, 17 hex or 23 in decimal. So I computed this yesterday, so it should be correct. So uh, next one, uh, since we already know that uh, Maria just uses a XOR uh, algorithm, so these are the XOR keys that we were able to identify that uh, Mirai variants are using. So approximately 47 different XOR keys used. And these are the top five that we found. So first is the dead beef or CRX22. So this includes Mirai. So we found that 27 variants are using this. And we have uh, 54, 45. Then another interesting is this zero. So 13 variants are using it. So it means that uh, the configuration table was not encrypted. So we can see everything, the CNC, the port that it uses. So we can see everything. Maybe it was used for testing purposes, or maybe they just forgot to encrypt the configuration. And next is uh, catching live samples uh, with our uh, honeypot. So we uh, started a project last year in our team. So we call it the Kai project or kill all IoT botnets project. So we just use uh, static analysis. Then we automate the decryption of the configuration table. So as mentioned, it just uses XOR algorithm. So it should be, uh, we could automate this process. The next is unpacking of known packers. So it, it just uses UPX, so we just decompress it UPX and see if the header is correct. If it's not, then we just change it to UPX. Then we will be able to decompress it. Then after de decompressing it, we can get the configuration table. Then also we uh, collect the CNC servers and the download URLs. So the result of this project for the past year, we collected around 21,000 samples. Then from these 21,000 samples, uh, we got uh, 15,000 samples that are related to Mirai botnet. Then next one is we identified 120 variants. So uh, 120 variants is a lot, but I'll explain here how we were able to get this much. Then we have blacklisted uh, around 500 plus uh, command and control servers. So uh, just an overview uh, of our honeypot. So we use a low, low interaction honeypot. So we have here uh, our product here. So uh, we use FortiGate. So this is the one facing the internet. So every traffic that uh, goes into port 23 and 23, 23, 23 uh, will be routed to our test network. So once it's inside the test network, so our FortiGate again, or any router, uh, it will uh, uh, direct the traffic to our virtual machine. So this virtual machine has two components. So first is the back end. So this one is the one that collects all the data from our honeypot. And this one here is uh, the honeypot itself. Uh, so all the data gathered here, the samples, the URLs that being downloaded, will go back here to our Kybe system. And this Kybe will be, Kybe system will be the one to be, uh, to analyze the data. Yeah. And then, Next, uh, so how do we identify the Mirai variants? So uh, originally, uh, Mirai was named after by the strings or command, this, this bin busy box Mirai, and Mirai applet not found. So this is not a, a valid command. So it, it, it is here since uh, these are commands to determine if it, if it has successfully brute force its way to our targeted IoT device. So Mirai was named uh, with this string. So the same with uh, the variant. So we have here an example from a configuration table of uh, a Mirai variant. So it, it, changes the, it changes this one. So bin busy box OOMGA. So we can just name this variant uh, OOMGA. Then next, uh, this is the, all the variants that we were able to identify for the past year. So this is a word cloud. So the bigger the word means that uh, it has more samples. So we, uh, it's pretty obvious already on who are the big names here, uh, Sora, Oari. Then, then you can also take a look on some of them. Maybe you, you have uh, encountered them or heard before, like uh, Masuta maybe or Okiru. 
So yeah, these are uh, all the variants that we have identified. So uh, next slide. So this is the variant count. So uh, before 2018, uh, we, all, we only uh, identified uh, 14 variants of Mirai. But now, uh, in the year 2018, it suddenly jumped 41 in January. So uh, this also is in line since uh, by this time, uh, instead of using brute force logins, uh, Mirai variants were using known exploits. So yeah, that, that was a big change. So we can also see the trend that it's going up every month. So by August, we already have 127 Mirai variants uh, active. So here is a sample count for each month of 2018 that we processed. So January, we had 2,000. So if you can see, like every month, we almost process more than more than a thousand samples. Then, for example, here at May, we only have like uh, 1,405. So comparing it to the uh, previous slide, so April had 76, but May had 81. So there was only an increase by five. So th it could mean that uh, since there are only five new variants, then there were also less samples that we were that were being processed. Then another example here is July. So this was the peak. So we had a lot of samples here. So as we can see, July here. So from 98 from June, it jumped to 117. So there were uh, 19 new variants in July. So just last month. So now, uh, just to filter out more the data. So we have a sample count per variant. So uh, most samples are still in Mirai. So uh, this shows that uh, a lot of people or a lot of cyber criminals are testing Mirai. Uh, maybe uh, a lot of them are script kiddies who wants to learn using the bot, but uh, a few are really are skillful on want to uh, modifying the bot. So again, here we have the top five, Mirai, Sora, Oari, Joshua, and Daddy L3T. So now uh, we proceed to the targeted architectures by Mirai. So all this here, uh, 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 the bot can be built. The bot can be built uh, compatible for this architecture. So uh, all of this here. So we have R, MIPS, SuperH, uh, Spark, Motorola, Intel, our PC, AMD, and IBM. Then next. Uh, not only does Mirai variants add exploits to its, uh, its arsenal, it also uh, wants to target more devices. So by doing this, uh, it adds a new architecture to target. So this is the ARC International ARC Compact Processor. So this was discovered uh, January 2018, just this year. So it was initially used by Okiru variant. And this, is, this was quite uh, big news since uh, around 1.5 billion products are dispatched per year using this processor. So if uh, Okiro could infect like just a portion of these devices, then it could be a big botnet. Then after Okiro, so other variants also joining the ARC architecture. So we have these six here, Masuta, Omni, Root, Sauce, Chicken, Inks, and Wicked. So uh, now we will take a look at the exploits. So it's quite a lot. So we were able to detect uh, 28 exploits being used by the Mirai variants. So at least 16, 16 of them are un unauthenticated exploits, uh, meaning that doesn't need to have to log in or doesn't need uh, valid credentials to exploit an IoT device. So this is quite dangerous. Then uh, 14 of the exploits are from 2017 and 2018. So for users that uh, don't patch their IoT device, even though they change their password, are still vulnerable by these uh, exploits. So we have here the brands that are affected by the 28 exploits. So it ranges from routers, modems, CCTV, DVR, IP cameras, web apps, and also minor software products. So for the specific vulnerable product, maybe you can just uh, check online on which uh, a product is uh, uh, vulnerable to this. Uh, then now we'll proceed uh, on the main variants by Mirai. So Satori or Okiru. 
So it was believed to be coded by Nexus Zeta. So this name was always in the configuration table. And this is one of the most popular modification of Mirai. So the loader was embedded in its bot. Then it included the architect arch architecture test target, so as we mentioned a while ago. Then it uses exploits to spread. And one version of it uh, mines cryptocurrency. So let's take a look on it, at its timeline. So we first saw this on December 2017. So this CVE 2017-17215 by Huawei, from Huawei. So this is a remote code execution. So by that time, there were no details of this exploit. So uh, we, we assumed that this vulnerability used by this uh, botnet was a zero day. And it was in fact a zero day. And other exploits here are from 2014, uh, from real te for targeting the uh, real tech SDK. Then we have here the CVE 2017 from the uh, Wi-Fi CAM. So this one is also uh, important since uh, around 185,000 Wi-Fi cameras are vulnerable to this one, this uh, exploit. And we have here the OS command injection to D-Link and HTTP basic authorization bypass in Go Ahead webs. Then. Uh, the interesting stuff in uh, this one is this uh, CVE here, right here. So it targets the Claymore miner software. So what the botnet do is uh, it scans port 333. Then it targets the Claymore software uh, mining. So what it, what it uh, do, it changes the destination wallet. So instead of going to the host or the proper user, it changes the destination wallet to its own. So as you can see the command here. So we tried to check the value of this uh, uh, wallet. And as of January, from, uh, I think it just uh, been used for a month. So the last payout was January 29, 2018. And it has been paid around 3.33 Ethereum. So on January, the value of Ethereum was, I think, around uh, 1,000 US dollar, but now it dropped already. So by January, it earned around 3.3k uh, US dollar in a month because of uh, this one. And now we have uh, the next variant. Uh, we call it OMG or OOMGA. So this uh, turns IoT devices into proxy servers. So it contains still the original Mirai, so it can still attack. It has the killer and the scanner functions. Then it uses brute force to log in, so it don't have any exploit. Then we discovered this in February 2018. So it uses the tree proxy. It's a, it is an open source uh, proxy server. And how, how does it uh, turn the IoT device to a proxy server? So it generates two random ports for HTTP and SOX proxies, uh, as you can see here. Then from there, uh, it will try to allow traffic by, so for the uh, proxy to work properly, so a firewall, a firewall rule must be added to allow the traffic on the randomly generated ports. So once the ports are generated, they are reported to the CNC. So we have here the command to add the firewall rule to that, uh, to that port, that generated port. So uh, this was also significant since cyber criminals can also earn money by renting out these proxy servers to other criminals who wants to hide their identity or their location. So next, uh, we, in, we just sum up this uh, Oari, Sora, Wicked, and Omni variants. Since, the, since we believe that they were coded by the same uh, malware author. So the author calls himself Wicked, so with his friend called Karma off. So Sarah, you, uh, Sora, the, this botnet uses Aboriginal Linux. So this is a cross compiler. So it's, it is much easier for the authors to compile the bot in different architectures. Then this variant commonly uses exploits other than uh, default passwords. And one of the sample that we found includes 11 exploits in it. So again, we will try to show a timeline. So maybe, uh, I think it's too small. But 
Uh, the first that we discovered was OARI, so it was November 2017. So for this time, it was just using default passwords. But as uh, 2018 came, it added uh, exploits like every month. Then just June, I think this is June, so we found a sample that includes all these exploits. So, uh, so this variant takes advantage of uh, using known exploits. So these are all known exploits rather than uh, discovering zero day. Since uh, this is also practical since uh, users don't usually update their products. And many users are just uh, use and forget. So with the number of exploits in it, so how does this variance uh, choose which uh, exploit to use in the vulnerable device? So what it does is uh, scan specific ports by initiating a raw socket scene. So for example here, uh, it tries to connect to this port. So we have 8080, 8443, 80, and 81. So it, if it uh, was able to establish or uh, uh, check that this, op this port is open, it will use the corresponding exploit. So for example, port 88 is found to be open. It will use the uh, RCE Netgear DGN 1000 exploit. So it goes the same with uh, other exploits mentioned. And to finish it up, so uh, this one is just like uh, from Omni Botnet. So it was just uh, mocking Brian Krebs. So this is the face of Brian Krebs here. So for, for vulnerability devices, so uh, maybe he's targeting web servers or any, it tries to remove the HTML log in that HTML here, the file here. So when it, once it removes this one, it will download, it will download this one. Meme, so this is this is the download URL, and it will replace it to be as the login that HTML. So if you're the infected user, then you go to your login that HTML, you will see this screen in your IoT device. So it says it says here use uh, stop right there. So want your router fix? No problem. Send an email to Krebs on security at gmail.com, and we'll have it fixed asap. And Scarface is your daddy. Uh, and now some final thoughts on Mirai variants and our talk today. So uh, we still expect more exploits that will be added. And then uh, still more variants will be appearing. Then another thing also is a modification of uh, encryption of configuration tables since it's already predictable. Maybe some malware author will uh, try to change it. Then next is other means to monetize infected IoT devices other than crypto mining and uh, proxy servers. So as of now, uh, we have uh, many have used, experimented, and modified the code for their own liking and purpose. Uh, variants have many variants uh, want to have a piece of the IoT pie, uh, and they are battling to compromise more and more vulnerability IoT devices. So the question still remains: uh, Who will be the next Mirai? Thank you. And thank you very much, Romel. Yeah, thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? OK, if there are no further questions, please keep in mind that Romel will be available for the rest of the day here at the conference to ask any questions that may come to mind later on. Thank you again, Romel.